Let's turn our Bibles to Book of Colossians. Colossians chapter three. Colossians chapter three. We're gonna look at verses fifteen through seventeen. Colossians chapter three, verses fifteen through seventeen. The title of the message is something that's missing in your life. Something that's missing in your life. Colossians chapter three, verses fifteen through seventeen. The Bible says, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Brother Richard, can you please pray for the message? Dear God, we thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for allowing us to have a, a Bible-believing church, Lord, that solely uses the King James Bible, Lord. And that's truly your word speaking directly to us, Lord. Uh, we thank you for that, Lord. And Father, we thank you for... For all the grace and mercy that you've bestowed upon us, Lord. Father, we pray that you help heal and protect any of the brethren that's not feeling well right now, Lord. Please be with them and comfort them with the Holy Spirit. Father God, I pray unto you to please fill Pastor Jay with your Holy Spirit, Lord, Amen. so that he may provide a sermon that will change us from inside out, Lord. Uh, that way we may become better Christians in this world, Lord. Uh, Father God, I pray that you... Uh, fill everyone here with your Holy Spirit and allow this day to be pleasing in your eyes, Lord, and provide your protection over this congregation, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Something that's missing in your life. So you may be wondering, you're guessing, so what's missing in my life, right? Are you saying, is love missing in your life? You know, some people tend to say that I don't have much love in my life. Or some will say, you know, money is missing in my life. Or some will say, you know, power, fame, right job, you know, right opportunity is missing in life. But as Christians, there's definitely something that's missing in your life. And that is thanksgiving, giving thanks to God. That is missing in your life. If you look at your current Christian life, Many times you go a day without giving thanks to God like you should. You should be giving thanks to God always. But however, because of who you are, because you're full of flesh and you're always being attacked by the world, the devil, and because naturally you're stubborn and you're proud, you refuse to give thanks to God for everything that he has done for you. And especially for the salvation, you forget to Give thanks to God always. What happens is that when you don't give thanks to God, what happens? You're no different than any worldly person out there. Things that should differentiate you from other folks is being thankful because you have something that a lot of people don't have, majority of the people that do not have. Number one thing is that you have salvation. If you do have salvation, you should be thankful no matter what. If you have salvation, the worst thing that could ever happen to you here on earth is that you just die and you wake up in heaven. If you have salvation, whatever is going on in your life, you could always have that hope, blessed hope, that one day you're going to wake up in heaven. If you have that salvation, if you know some of the doctrines, you know that Lord is inside of you, you're sealed with the Holy Ghost. So no matter what you do, no matter what you think, you're going to go to heaven. I mean, it's greatest blessing ever when even if I don't want to go to heaven, I'm going to heaven because I trusted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Even if I want to go to hell, I can't go to hell because I trusted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And that's once in your life. It's not, you know, many Sundays where you have to accept him in your heart or a lot of people do sinner's prayer after every, you know, praise and worship service. No. Jesus Christ died for you once, and if you trusted him as your Lord and Savior once in your life, realizing that you're a sinner on your way to hell, 
believing that He is God and His shed blood can wash all your sins and receive Him in your heart as your Lord and Savior once in your life, then you're born again Christian. You're born again from devil's family into God's family, and you have received eternal life, and your body and your soul separated once and for all, and you're going to go to heaven no matter what. I mean, that is the greatest blessing. Amen. But however, how often do you think about it? Did you think about it this morning? Did you think about it last night? You know, it's a rhetoric question. Preaching is not something that you don't really know. Preaching is something that you know that you have to apply in your life. You have to make it part of your life. It has to become your behavior. Hardest thing for a human being to do is change behavior. But you're a new creature if you trust that Christ as your Lord and Savior. You have a new man inside of you. Yes. You have the Holy Ghost working inside of you. You have Lord Jesus Christ inside of you. You have to yield yourself to the Holy Ghost. You have to yield yourself to the Lord. Then you can be changed. So as you listen to any preaching, whether it's this one or in the past or in the future, your heart has to be in the right place. You could hear the greatest preaching, but each person will receive it differently. And there's reason why each person will receive it differently. It all depends on which spiritual state you're in. You could have been a church member for 20, 35 years, and you should be that mature Christian. But because you're living in sin, because you're not close to Lord Jesus Christ, you're no better than someone who just got saved. And there could be someone who's been saved for seven days, and they could be more spiritual than you because their heart is right with the Lord. So anytime you listen to preaching, anytime you read the Word of God, anytime you pray, number one thing you do have to check is that it's my heart right with the Lord. And definitely it's not right with the Lord if thanksgiving to God is missing in your life. I mean, did you give thanks to God about your spouses today, right? You all have, some of you are married, right? Yes. And some of you, you know, at least one man, one brother is very sure about his marriage, okay? <laughs> I don't know about the rest of you guys, right? Be sure. I mean, I'm glad you're sure about that. If you are married, I mean, what, what's the vow people do, you know, for good or worse? Or, I mean, I don't remember. But whatever it is, whether it's good or bad, you guys made a vow that you are going to be one. Then you should be thankful for your spouses no matter what. You might hate each other right now for whatever reason, but you made that vow, and then that's a testimony to the Lord. And unless it's for the right reasons, you're not going to get divorced, right? Especially if you're a Bible-believing Christian, yeah. then you have to be thankful for your spouse. Amen. I mean, you must have a good, you must have some good times in the past, right? Yeah. I mean, unless it was an arranged marriage you know, like a lot of people do, people still do in many parts of the world. If you guys, you know, saw each other, you guys liked each other, you guys fell in love with each other, and then, you know, you married each other, then there must be something that you liked about the other person, and you married each other for that reason or for those reasons. Then you should be thankful. You should be thankful that, you know, you could actually spend your life here together with a partner, you know, together. Then you should be thankful instead of always complaining about the other spouse. You know, she's nagging too much. He's nagging too much. He doesn't bring more money. She doesn't bring more money, you know. Doesn't look as good as before, right? You know, and now you're just thinking about their outside, appear outward appearance, you know. You're thinking about financial and all those stuff. You have to truly see why you marry that person in the per first place and you should be thankful for that person. I mean, obviously, number one thing that you always uh, need to be thankful is what Lord Jesus Christ did for you. If that translates in your life, then you're going to be thankful for your spouses. You know, many times, devil will attack you. Devil will attack Christian family. And how is he going to attack Christian family? By trying to split the family, trying to create drama, trying to trying to create this confusion, trying to create this, you know, fighting, diversion, whatever you call it, amongst families, 
among spouses. And a lot of times it happens for the smallest reasons, right? And again, when we, th when we talk about this hierarchy in the family, so head of the man is Christ, and man is the head of the woman, then you have to follow that hierarchy. And as a man, you have to make sure that you're thankful for the wife and the children that God has given you, which means you have to realize that you have more responsibility and accountability as a man. Thank God that you do have a more accountability and responsibility as a man. You know, we live in society where everything's about gender neutral, everything's about equality. But if you truly ask a woman, you know, they, if they're honest about it, they know that they're different from men. Same thing with men. Men and women are different. Yes. Then if they're different, then roles are different. Then you have to be that bigger man, as people say, right? right. If you're a husband, be a bigger man. You know, you shouldn't be in the same level as your wife when it comes to, you know, your responsibility and accountability. Well, certain situations are different, but in general, you know, as a man of the house, you have to act like a man. And as a woman of the house, you have to act like a woman. And as a children of the house, you have to act like children. Amen. Then you should all be thankful for the parts of the family that you have on a daily basis, not when you listen to preaching, when you read certain verses. Every day, you should be thankful for your wife, thankful for your husband, thankful for your children. Yes. I mean, were you thankful for your wife or your I mean, children and your husband recently? Or you just live your life like, okay, this is what I've given, you know, this is, you know, how I've decided to choose my life to be, and I'll just live with it. You know, that is a horrible living. You know, when you're not thankful for each other and you just live to live, I mean, what are you going to get out of it? Uh, you get nothing out of it. You know, you just eat together, you know, sometimes, right? And then you just do your, some responsibility. And that's why there's like no true charity in relationships in Christian family because they're not thankful for each other. Again, if you're not thankful for your mom and daddy, you know, children, you know, you're going against the word of God. And I guarantee you, when you grow up, your children will not be thankful for you or your, I mean, you. Why? Because your behavior, because how you live, will translate a lot of times to your children. That's why parents have to be very careful. Parents, you have responsibility to teach your children to be thankful for everything instead of spoiling them, like many families out there, right? If kids ask for money, oh, give it. If kids ask for toys, give it. If kids ask for blah, 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 do it. That's why kids start cussing at their parents. Kids are now killing parents. Can you imagine 20, 30 years ago? Even, you know, 10 years ago. I mean, do you, can you imagine your own child just killing you? But it's happening over and over and over. You hear many, many horrible stories where children are killing moms, dads, and grandparents. Why? Because something's missing in everyone's life, and that's Thanksgiving. If your children were really thankful for your parents, then they wouldn't kill their parents, right? right. Or be murderers, right? If wife were truly thankful for husband, they wouldn't kill their husband. Right. If husband were thankful for their wives and children, there wouldn't be murder suicide, right? There shouldn't be any thought that goes through your head you know, if you're a Bible-believing Christian, oh, man, I wish I would have married a different person. I wish I would have had a different children. I wish, I wish, I wish. Well, what do you wish for? I mean, it's not going to really make you a better Christian. It's going to change you as who you are. No, if you're dealt with that environment, you chose the decision because of your decision, you are where you are, then you should pray to God if it's something that needs help. Pray to God for help. Don't try to complain and murmur your way out of it and justify it. Again, one of the greatest sins that you and I commit on a daily basis is that we tempt Christ. We try to justify our situation to our Lord and Savior. Right. Lord, I made certain decisions and acts, but you know what? Because I wasn't in my right mind, so just... Get, away, get it away from me. I want a fresh new start. 
I mean, yeah, I mean, it sounds good that you could have a fresh new start. Like you meet a different person, you know, you do different things, but that's not the case. There's no time machine. You can't go back. You already made that choice. Just like what Galatians chapter 6 says, you reap what you sow. Then you have to understand that, you know what, where I am, you know, I need to be more of a thankful person. I need to be thankful for the situation. I need to be thankful for the people in my life. I need to be thankful for a variety of things, right? I mean, that includes, you know, local Bible believing church that you could go to, yeah. you know, the fact that you could walk because everybody's here because you're able to walk. Amen. You could move. Yes. Some people, you know, it's harder, but you are at least able to move and navigate. That's why you're here. Then you should be thankful. There are many, many people out there who can't move. They don't have leg, right? right? There are many, many people who can't, like, do anything because their back is such in a horrible shape, yes. then you should be thankful that today I'm able to be in a local church and to, you know, have fellowship and serve and worship God. Let's turn the Bible to the book of Luke, Luke chapter 17. Definitely, Thanksgiving is missing in many, many people's lives. And when we look at Luke, we could see the percentage Luke chapter 17, verse 11. Luke chapter 17, verse 11. It's a famous story. Uh, and then ten lepers getting healed. But let's see how many came back and thanked the Lord. Luke chapter 17, verse 11. And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And he came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? They are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto them, um, he, and he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. Oh, wow. Ten. Ten were healed. And one came back and gave thanks. Well, you know, you math geniuses here. You know, what is that? You don't have to be a math genius, right? You know, that's 10%. 10% out of 100% gave thanks to the Lord. Think about it. You know, leprous state is a horrible state. I mean, if you've ever seen any documentaries, if you've ever seen any person with leprosy, it's horrible. Like your, your being is like just melting and being taken away. And it's a horrible you know, state to be in. And they were healed from that state. And only one person came back and gave thanks to the Lord. How many of you then have given thanks to the Lord about what he has done for you? I mean, he healed your sorry state as a sinner yes. on your way to hell. Amen. He gave you eternal life. Thank you, Lord. If we have, you know, 50 people here, 100 people here, that means less than 10 people have given thanks to the Lord. And I think that's a pretty correct measurement. Yes. I mean, if I were to do a survey, you know, hey, raise your hand. Lord healed you from your sorry state, your eternal way to hell, but he saved you from hell. How many of you actually glorified God and gave thanks to him? Um, if, you were, if I say, raise your hand honestly, I think there's going to be less than 10%, especially if I say, okay, within past one week. How many of you actually thank the Lord for your salvation? Right? And minus the time when you're street preaching or something, you know, when you're doing things of God, but just on a regular days and basis. And he wasn't even a Jew. He was a Samaritan who gave thanks. Right? And that really tells you and me that something that's really missing in our life, everyday life, is thanksgiving to God. 
When you don't give thanks to God, this is what happens in the world, right? Everything's going down the toilet. You know, right now, economy is bad, right? You know, morals are not there. You know, everything's gray. Now there's no, you know, white and black anymore. I mean, the state is in, the whole world is in complete apostasy. Why did this happen? Because people do not glorify God and they do not thank the Lord. If you don't thank God, then who are going to thank, right? You're going to thank yourself. Right. And when man thanks himself, then everything goes down to the toilet and everything goes out of you know, alignment. Then why should you give thanks to God, right? Why? Let's turn our Bibles to 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Again, you know, there are various reasons. You know, many preachers will say different answers to it. But let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. Why should you give thanks as a Christian? Number one, because you need to be different from the world. Amen. You need to be different from the world. That's point number one. Why should you give thanks? Because... You need to be different from the world because 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 says, This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Give and we're in the last Christian, days, brethren. brethren. Number one, because for men shall be lovers of their own the selves, covetous, bolsters, proud, blasphemers, That's point disobedient one. to Why parents, should you give unthankful, thanks? unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Traitors, heady-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. We are living in the last days. And if you do not give thanks to God always, what's going to happen? You're no different than the world, and you're going into straight apostasy, and you're going to be destroyed, and you're going to show all these characteristics that we've seen in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. I mean, we've never been in a day and age where people are lovers of themselves, right? Truly, everything that you see out there, whether it's on TV, whether it's, you know, social media, everything, people have never been Lovers of themselves like this. I mean, sometimes you go like, man, do they not have a shame at all? I mean, there's no, how should I say, guilty conscience anymore. People will post things and they're so proud of it. And they think they're so worth it and they're so good. Because why? They're not thankful. You look at it. Facebook streaming, right? How many times people have done crimes and they're streaming I mean, live? And they think they're so proud of it. They think, you know what? That's how I'm going to get love from people. They're like, you know what? People don't have to love me. I love myself. I mean, what a bad attitude, right? I mean, you have to be a good testament. I'm not saying that you should be loved by the world. But you shouldn't have an attitude where, you know what, as long as I love me and I'm okay. You know, as a Christian, you is no good. You are flesh. You're full of the devil. You always think to do pleasures more than glorifying God. Right. Then you have to realize, why is Thanksgiving missing in my life? Why? Because I'm conformed to the world. Because I am aligned with too much of the things of the world that's why I don't give thanks to God, right? If you love everything that world's doing, you're hating everything that God's doing. Yes. God and the world is polar opposite. Amen. I mean, if you are aligned with all the policy of the world, if you're aligned with all the thoughts of the world, then you're against what the Bible says then how would you ever be a person of thanksgiving to God? Then what is a very common characteristic of, you know, so-called just normal general public, worldly person nowadays? 
They're complainers and murmurs. That's what the general com, you know, characteristic of yes. you know, public is. That's true. You're complaining about everything. You know, complaining about your situation. And a lot of times, you're in that situation because you put yourself in that situation. Right? right? If you're in a relationship, you know, undoing, or if you're in a relationship, you know, I don't know, like, it's not going well. And many times, it's because of you. You put yourself in that situation. You know, financial burdens, many times, you put yourself in that situation. I mean, we know this inflation, everything's horrible, horrible, right? You know, yeah. don't get me wrong. But many times, you probably had the opportunity to do things right. And, you know, sometimes it comes to your family environment. You put yourself in there, too. Your health, sometimes you put yourself in there, too, right? If you eat healthier, if you exercise more, you might be able to avoid some of the, you know, things that's happening in your body. Then it comes down to it. When those things do happen in your life, you start complaining. You know, you're always complaining. And you're complaining to God. You're complaining to your husband. You're complaining to your wife. You're complaining to your children. And you come to church, and you're complaining and complaining and murmuring. Then how are you different from people of the world? How are you different from general public? How are you different from non-Christians? You're just the same. If you're going to complain and murmur, don't you ever call yourself a Christian. Why? Because people don't want to be a Christian because of how you act and how you behave. Because for many people, they never see the Word of God. They never want to hear the Word of God. Right. They never want to listen to any preaching or go study the Bible. So you're the only Bible they see. Yes. Then if you are a character and person who always complains about everything, why would they want to be a Christian? No. That's why stop giving excuses. In order to be different from the world, you have to get right with the Lord and confess your sins and start giving thanks to God. One of the greatest privileges that you and I have as a Christian is that we can actually get right with the Lord. Think about it. I can go to the Lord, confess my sins from the bottom of my heart. Lord's going to forgive me. And those sins are gone. Amen. And I could start over. And that gives me joy. I don't know about you. You know, if you were to go to prisons around the world, if someone says, you know what? Yeah, man, you're for the crimes and everything. It's forgiven. Once and for all. And I'll never remember it and mention it ever again. Man, they're going to be happy. Yeah. I mean, they're going to be like, oh, wow, man. That, that's the that's greatest thing. But as Christians, you can't have that joy, right? If you haven't been different from the world and you've been complaining and murmuring all your life, especially recently, to everybody around you, then you need to get right with the Lord. You need to confess your sins of being unthankful, being murmurers and complainers, and get that joy that you've gotten yourself right with the Lord. And if you were to do that, you're going to be like the Samaritan coming back to the Lord and giving thanks. Glorify God. We're full of joy. Yes. And people like to shout for certain things, right? You know, sporting events, yeah. right? You know, when you like first confess your love to your husband or wife, you know, your children, you know, doing well, right? You know, people getting saved, everything, especially from a Christian standpoint. Yes. And this is one reason that you could shout to the Lord, because you could give him thanks. You know, as you read through the word of God and Psalms, you know, David shouted and praised the Lord and gave thanks to God. I don't know when was the last time you thanked God, you know, shouting to the Lord, you know, like truly, you know, thank you, Lord, right? You think about your state, you think about where you came from, and you're like, man, if I were in the world, never gotten saved, straight on my way to hell, man, I don't think, you know, I will ever be a, like a thankful person. But now, Lord saved you from all of those, 
and he's inside of you, and he's continuously giving you second, third, fourth, fifth, you know, thousands of chances, then how can you not be thankful? Again, you need to be thankful because you need to be different from the world. Amen. And secondly, why should you be thankful? And why is it missing in your life? But why should you be thankful? Because it's a command from the Lord. Lord said to do it. Lord said, be ye thankful. Turn your Bibles to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. I mean, it's Lord's command. It's not like you have a choice when Lord said to do it. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. We'll look at verse 16 through 18. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. So again, why are you giving thanks? Because you want to be different from the world. And secondly, because it's Lord's command. The Bible says, rejoice evermore. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. I mean, Lord said everything. That includes good and the bad and everything in between. Yes. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. You have to give thanks to God for everything. You know, whether you had a good day or bad day, you give thanks to God, Amen. right? Yes. Whether you feel good or bad, you give thanks to God, yes. right? Whether, you know, you could walk or you can't walk, you give thanks to God. Yes. You know, you give thanks to God for everything. Whether you're rich or poor, you give thanks to Amen. God. Amen. You know, for everything, you got to give thanks to God. Whether you get into a young people, good college or not good college, you give thanks to God because that's God's will. You have to give thanks to God for everything. However, you know, even though it's Lord's command, how many of you think that you give thanks to God in everything? It's impossible because you're a human being, right? You and I are not perfect. But what are the reasons then? You know, number one thing is because it doesn't go your way. If things don't go your way like you wanted it to or you expect it, they're not going to give thanks to God. I mean, for reals. Yes. All right, let me ask you, Isaac, are you going to give thanks to God if you, get in, if you do not get into the college of your parents' choice? Oh, man. I, what? I mean, oh, man. Or any of the kids here? A lot of times, parents want to live through their children. Yes. Do you ra are you raising up your children according to God's will or your own will? If you do it on your own will, you're going to complain to God all the time. Yes. Oh, man, my kid goes to a Bible-believing church, but didn't get into a great college. Lord, you know, I thought we gave up everything for you for attending Bible-believing church. You know, get out of here, right? I'm like, oh, yeah. You know, my kid needed to be a six foot two, but he hasn't grown a lot, even though he went to Bible-believing church. Complaining, like... Oh, yeah, my daughter, you know, she was supposed to win the Miss USA, you know. But no, you know, she's nowhere the level of, you know, beauty that I wanted it to be. What's going on, right? Why is, he, why is my child not as smart as the other kid, right? So when things do not go your way, you start complaining. And you're complaining about everything. God, I didn't get the job. I know it wasn't your will. And instead of giving thanks to God because God probably has a better thing waiting for you, you're complaining to God. God, you know, that job was for me. My name was written on it. You know, I love that company. I love the boss. I love the people. You know, that was the job for me, Lord. Why didn't I get it? So you're complaining to God and murmuring instead of thanking God that, you know what, God, you know, I thank for the opportunity, you know, for interview the job, but it wasn't your will. So, you know, I continue to search for better job for me in your will. And, you know, the worst thing is, again, going back to it, you start complaining about your spouses, right? Like, God, you know, I didn't think he was going to be like this. I didn't think she was going to be like this. What do you expect? You're two different people from two different worlds living together, you know, as one. There's going to be friction. There's going to be differences in opinion. You know, unless you really don't care for each other, you know, then you guys are like robots, right? Yeah. But if you have any feelings, you know, as a human being, then there's going to be conflicts in any relationship. Instead of complaining, you should thank God. 
that through this, I could become a better husband, I could become a better wife, I could become a better father, yes. you know, better mother, I could become a better daughter, better son, you know, better grandma, grandpa, you know, everything. That's why you have to realize that giving thanks to God is not an option. It's a command. Amen. And you don't only thank God during good times. And a lot of times you forget about thanking God during good times, yes. right? Yes. If everything goes well, you try to give credit to yourself. I you know, I'm pretty good. I'm yes. pretty smart. You know what, man? The job I got because of me. The girl that I married is because of me. The guy that I married is because of me. The school that I got in is because of me. The house that I live in, the cars that I drive, it's all because of me, 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 right? right? Man, and if anything goes wrong, those are the people who's going to complain to God right away. Yeah. God, you know. Again, you always try to tempt Christ and justify. I believe in King James Bible. I go to a local Bible-believing church. I have strong faith. How could you do this to me? Uh, man, look at yourself. You know, if you were to play how you're thinking, how you behave, how you act, and then probably you want to hide somewhere, right? Yeah. If you're a, you know, honest Christian, do you have any type of integrity? That's why one of the reasons that you don't give thanks to God, because when things don't go your way, you just start complaining and murmur. So remember, if you're a person, if anything does not go your way, if you start complaining and murmuring, you are disobeying. God's command. You're sinning on the spot. First Thessalonians 5.18, just memorize and remember it. When thought of disobedience, when thought of murmuring and complaining come into your heart, just recite the verse. In everything, give thanks to God, for this is the will of God. You know, sometimes people ask each other, what is the will of God? What is the will of God in my life? One of them, in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you, good or bad. So at the end of the day today, brethren, before you go to sleep and you pray, spend time with the Lord, give thanks to God for everything, right? Yes. If you fought with your wife or your husband, give thanks to God yes. so that you learn from it. Yes. You know, driving, give thanks to God. You know, if you were hungry but you got to some food, give thanks to God. Amen. You got to read the word of God, give thanks to God. Yes. You know, you didn't get hurt today, then give thanks to God. Yes. You know, you're able to breathe, give thanks to God. You know, you're able to move, you know, you're able to sing. Everything, in every, everything that you remember. That's why when you truly give thanks to God, you're going to spend a lot of time with the Lord in prayer. People say, I don't know, my prayer life is hard because I could only pray for like one minute. Uh -huh. Because... You don't give thanks to God for everything. Yes. I mean, it, once you start listing everything, I'm pretty sure you're going to be on your knees praying to God for at least, you know, 10 to 15 minutes. Yeah. Because you're blessed from young to old and everyone yes. in between. God has blessed you with so many things, yes. whether good or bad. Yes. Then you got to give thanks to God for everything. And of course, you know, if things don't go your way, you don't thank, give thanks to God. And when trials and suffering comes, you don't give thanks to God. You know, when, you know, when you're suffering, it's hard. I understand whether it's physically, financially, emotionally, relationship-wise. If you're suffering, you don't give thanks to God, even though it's a command. But look at Apostle Paul. I mean, he was praising God in prison in cold winter days. He was just praising God. Praising God. And when trials and sufferings do come in your life, you should really think about it. Why did it come? Yeah. Right? A lot of times it comes because of your sin. I would say maybe 90% of the time it comes because of your sin, majority of the time. Yeah. Because of what you've sold, it comes back to you and you're reaping. But thank God that, you know, God has still grace and mercy upon you. Give thanks to God. And sometimes you haven't done anything wrong, but you're still suffering. Then because God has a different plan for you. Maybe through your suffering, another brother or sister, unsaved person 
can get saved or can get encouragement. Amen. That's why when sufferings come your way, number one, think about and, you know, examine your life, whether sin has caused those suffering. If not, thank God that, man, you could suffer for the Lord for the good reasons, right reasons. And thirdly, you know, another reason why you don't give thanks to God is because you compare yourself to others. I mean, it's very common. Yeah. Man, you cannot thank God if you're not born in the family of Bill Gates, right? If Bill Gates is not your dad, if Elon Musk is not your dad, then you're, you're like, man, Lord, why wasn't I born in a rich family, right? right? How come Jeff Bezos is not my father, you know? Why isn't my dad, my mom, you know, rich, right? And then you start complaining. You should never compare yourself to others. Only thing that's going to bring is either complain, murmuring, or, you know, pride, yeah. right? However you look, that's how God has given you, right? Be thankful for that, right? Where you're living, you know, if you're doing your best, and that's what God has provided for you, where you live, what you drive, and everything, just be thankful. Yes. Don't compare to someone next to you. I mean, because of commercialization of so much materialism in America, everybody's comp complaining and comparing. You know, hey, And that's where a lot of fightings come in the family. Wife complained to husband, hey, how come you don't make as much money as John Doe over there, you know? Husband is complaining to wife, hey, how come you don't do as much as Jane Doe over there for John Doe over there? You know, children are complaining, hey, how come that John Doe father has more money than you? You know, mom, how come you don't do this for me and all that? Why? Because you start complaining and you start comparing. You got to stop complaining yourself to others. If you do your best for the Lord, that's it. Even if you don't do best for the Lord, that's it. It's just you and the Lord. Stop comparing yourself to others. If you consistently and continuously compare yourself to others, you will never be a thankful person. Right. Because there's always going to be a person who has more than you. There's always going to be who's going to be better looking than you. Yeah. There's always going to be a person who's healthier than you. There's always going to be a person who has more, better, everything than you. Then... What do you think you're going to do? You're not going to thank God. You're going to just keep on complaining about your situation. You're going to complain about your environment. You're going to complain about your lineage. You're going to complain about your genes. You're going to complain about every little thing in your life. You know, if you are content with what you have, that's godliness. You know? If you want godliness, if you really want to obey the Lord, be content with what you have, yes. right? That's it. You know, don't try to be too rich. Don't try to be, you know, too poor. You know, just in between. If everything's, you know, God provides you with everything which the Lord said he promises, then be thankful, Amen. right? Don't let the greed come in your way, covetousness go in your way, right? Don't let the pride get in the way. Don't let your haughtiness get in the way. You know, that's why as Christian, one of the things that you should never do is comparing yourself to others. You know, a lot of times when you start comparing, you know, you think you're better than the other person. That's what devil wants to use, right? Oh, yeah, you know, I'm a better looking than that, that person. I'm fine. I have more money than that person. I'm fine. You know, I have, I'm in better health than that person. I'm fine. You know, I have better family than that person. I'm fine. No, you're not fine. Then everything's going to turn back to you. Right? You're going to be uglier. You're going to be poorer. You're going to be, you know, less healthier. You know, everything. That's why stop comparing yourself to other people, whether it's saved or unsaved. Yeah. Stop comparing. Be thankful for your, what you have and give thanks to God for everything. That's why you shouldn't look at others. You should only look at Lord Jesus Christ. Hey. Right? Looking unto Jesus. That's yeah. what you want. Everything. What comes down to, are you looking at the world? Are you looking at people around you? Or are you looking at the Lord Jesus Christ? I mean, this is a very common example. When you're racing, when you're in a you know, short sprint 
racing, you know, maybe 100 meter. I mean, you're not going to win if you try to look around, you know, right. how the other person's yeah. doing. Right. You have 10 seconds or less to finish to win the race, right, in an Olympic event. Then you're just going to look at the finish line and you're just going to run as hard as you can. And that's when you have the best result. As Christians, you have to run like that. Amen. Forget about brother or sister next to you. I mean, you pray for them, of course, but you can't be comparing with them all the time, yeah. right? You just do your own race and you're going to finish the race well. You know, stop minding other people's business, right? Just mind your own things. Yes. You know, don't be that busybody, you know, who has to know everything that's going on, you know, with other people, right? right? <laughs> I don't know. Some people, it's such a habit that if there's a conversation, your body start moving to that conversation. I need to know what's going on. It comes from little kid to the older people, everybody. It's like, you, it's a word of the worst habit. Man, I need to know what that people, what those people are talking about. You know, I don't want to be left out, right? You know, FOMO, fear of missing out, is everywhere. You know, inside the church as well. Yeah, you know. Everybody's just minding their own business, and then you pop up there, you pop up there. I mean, you're known as someone that pops up everywhere, you know, like that groundhog just popping out everywhere because you need to know. You know, get rid of it. Amen. You don't need to know. Yes. I mean, it's not going to help you. I mean, all you're going to do is try to start a gossip, right? Start talking with your family. You know what I heard today? You know, and then a lot of times you miss the whole story. You hear bits here and there. You know, oh, yeah, you know, you know, that person's doing bad. That person's doing horrible. You know, that person's doing good. That person's not doing good. Then you start comparing yourself to others. And the whole family becomes like a gossipers, right? And the parents start teaching their kids, hey, always tell me what's going on. You know, in the class, you know, when you're having fellowship. Let me know. I need to know what's going on. What for? What good is it? Is it for glory of God? No, it's for your own pleasure of trying to be in everyone's business. So mind your own business. Stop minding other people's business. Just stay in your own lane. Then you're going to finish the race well. Stop comparing yourself to others. Then in conclusion, then what can you do? You know, this something that Thanksgiving has been missing in your life. Let's go to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. I mean, we all know the answer. I mean, this is a familiar verse. Philippians chapter 4. Let's look at Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. We'll start with Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. Again, ask yourself, man, what's the difference between me and the people of the world? And what's the difference between me and any other Christians out there? What's the difference between me and just, just normal, flesh-loving, carnal Christians out there. What's the difference? Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, Bible says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So what you want to do is, in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. You talk to God yes. constantly, all the time. And that's where Nehemiah prayer comes in, right? Nehemiah chapter 2. You constantly pray to the Lord you have that close relationship with the Lord before you forget. Let the Lord know. You and I, I don't know about you, as you get older, your memory goes away. You can't remember like you used to. Right. So you have, when you remember, just give thanks to God right away, whether it's good or bad. You know, Lord, you know, this is what happened. You know, I give thanks to you. Yes. You know, I give thanks to you. It's a bad thing that happened, but Lord, I give thanks to you. I know it's in your will. Good thing happened. Lord, thank you. And I give thanks to you. And when you do that, Lord's going to give you wisdom 
and you know for sure with conviction, without any doubt or hesitation, that Lord's going to provide my need. And I'm thankful for it because I'm in the will of God by giving thanks to God for everything. Let's pray. Dear God, something's missing in all of our life, and that's Thanksgiving. We discuss it, talk about it, study it, hear it all the time, but it's still missing in our life, Lord. We're supposed to be different from the world. We need to be a better, good, great testimony for you, Lord, but we're full of complaining and murmuring in our lives, and we don't give thanks to you always like you've commanded. Help us to get right with you, Lord. Help us to understand and really feel the joy of getting right with you, Lord, and being able to give thanks to you for what you have done for us, Lord God. Help us to pray, always giving thanks to you. You know, let our requests be known unto you with thanksgiving, always, Lord. Help us to be known as a thanksgiving person in good and bad in everything, to our husband, to our wife, to our children, to our mothers and fathers and grandmothers and grandfathers and everybody else. We need to be known as a thanksgiving Christian, Lord. I pray that you'll be with everyone here and those who aren't able to make it for many reasons, Lord. I pray that you'll continue to protect us from devil's attack, bless the rest of the day and the services. And the one prayer, Lord, even so come, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.